Hello YouTube, welcome to the channel. Now then on today's video, we are going to be looking at this. What is this you might be asking yourself? Well, if you cast your mind back to a prior review video I did on the WPL D64, um, I love the body on it, but I did say at the time, I wish WPL would put it on a more capable four wheel drive chassis, because the chassis they put it on was sort of based on a D12, bit more road going and you couldn't really do anything with it and I said I wish they'd put it on uh, something like a C14 or C24 chassis anyway my all my dreams have come true because I've just released this the C64-1 and this I think well we'll get into it in a minute it's got a far more capable four-wheel drive chassis underneath it so this thing is going to be in my opinion going to be a lot better than the D64 now before we get into it, this is the RTR version, all ready to run, so there should be everything included in the box, apart from batteries for the transmitter to run this little RC. It's 1 16th scale, it's four wheel drive. Uh, this thing is on Banggood at the moment, as I was making this video, it's on fla a flash deal, 43 quid, which is about $50, so I'll leave a link in the description. Anyway, let's crack this bad boy open and see what's inside. Okay, in the box we have a bag of accessories. There are some stickers in there. Uh, there's a USB battery charger and there's some indicators, headlight covers. Uh, looks like there's some spotlight covers, etc. A little screwdriver. Uh, we have, strangely, a WPL, what looks like a WPL chamois leather. I'm not sure about that. Uh, we've got the new four pin type WPL battery. I think it's still 500 milliamp hours, yes, yeah, 7.4 volt. Uh, no instructions, weirdly enough. Don't know if you're supposed to get instructions. Uh, we have the ubiquitous WPL controller or transmitter. It's got steering dual rate on it, and it's also got a brake function. And that's the same, I think, as a C74, if I'm not much mistaken. Now then, let's get on to the actual RC itself, the important bit. So here we go. Dun, dun, dun. Here we go, the new C64-1. I love the body on this. I, lo I like the crew cab sort of Hilux body on it. Uh, it looks like we've got the new type of wheels, although the rubber on them is very, very stiff. It's not soft or pliable at all. It's quite hard. And when I did get it out of the box, one of these little trailing links had popped off. So whether they're going to do that on a regular basis, I don't know. Long term use. Um, it looks as though we've got some brand new type shock absorbers on this thing. Uh, they look as though they're adjustable, not damped, very, very springy, but check out the articulation on these flipping neck. That's that's mental, a lot better than they used to be, but they are very, very bouncy. Um, the chassis wise, chassis wise, I think, I think it does look like a C14 or C24. So I think they've sort of plonked this body on that chassis. I'll check that in a bit. Uh, we've got the new sort of contra-rotating gearbox assembly. Um, disappointingly low, we've got the old 260 motor in. I would have liked to have seen the 280 in this because that 280 motor is a right beast. Um, so that's a little bit disappointing. It looks as though the, all these little links and everything are brand new. We've got an axle mounted steering servo as well, uh, which is a nice touch. Uh, but overall, first impressions, this is a great looking RC. As ever, with every uh, WPL, you get a really nice body on them. These hard bodies, I mean, they're super cheap RC, but you'll always get a decent hard body, and they make really nice projects for people making uh, different types of RCs out of them. But I do like this body. I'm not 100% sure if it is like 1 16th scale. Um, it looks a little bit smaller in my eyes. I don't know if there's a C14 I've got. just looks that much bigger, but it looks a little bit smaller than... Uh, 1 16th but uh, it, it is a beautiful looking body the, the suspension is like very wibbly wobbly and there's a lot of play in these links here and there I mean it is a cheap RC I know uh, but there's quite a lot of play there the MN that I tested with a couple of MNs that we've tested recently I think have been a little bit nicer or felt a little bit nicer quality wise anyway what I might do is uh, oh the battery lives in the back by the way under a under a cover there you go, that's a nice touch, keep it out of the road. Uh, we might whip this body off and have a look underneath. 
Right then, underneath that gorgeous white body, we have these new type of shock absorbers. Uh, they aren't damped at all, but we do have a preload adjustment on them. They are very, very springy, these. Um, I've had a quick look at the C14, C24 chassis. It does differ from this ever so slightly. So the chassis are different. I, I don't know if this chassis is unique to the uh, D64- or C64-1. Uh, we've got our... 260 motor there i would have liked to have seen a 280 in this because uh, like i said to you before the 280 is a bit of a beast and i must admit the couple of 260s i've tried have been a little bit underwhelming uh, we've got a new the new type of board which is nice to see at front the bc uh, this has got full light functionality if you wanted i think this model has only got uh, headlights at the moment but if you wanted to put indicators on it etc you could and we've got our three wire steering servo there, which is like I say, axle mounted, which is a nice touch. Anyway, just waiting for the battery to charge up uh, and then we're going to try them. Fully charged the battery, there are the headlights, nice and bright. Uh, I'll just quickly go through the transmitter functions. We've got steering dual rate, which effectively limits the amount of travel uh, we get on the steering. I, I can't see why you'd ever want the smaller amount of travel, to be honest. Uh, we've also got a brake function now. This is very useful off-road. So if I show you now, the truck sort of runs on a little bit. If I press the brake function, stops dead. So if you if you're going off-road, that's really useful if you're clambering up rocks and things. Um, let's just try it over my hand. See what uh, the articulation is like. Ooh, do you know that's not bad at all, really. That's that, that's some decent articulation for a cheap, a cheapy. Look at that. I am a little bit worried though because it's not particularly smooth. It's a little bit jerky, especially when you when you're under load. You know what I mean? It's not as smooth as a 280. Anyway, I'm under strict instructions not to get this thing dirty because it doesn't belong to me, but as ever uh, we'll we'll take it on the sofa of death right i'm dog sitting at the moment so if a white staffy wanders in you'll know what it is but anyway here goes let's try this thing oh so far so good oh just a little bit too top heavy it wants to though oh i don't think Just that little touch of jerkiness on the throttle as well. It's not quite as smooth as that 280. Let's try and give it an easier time. Right, let's try it again. Not bad, not bad, it's doing it. Go on. Right, let's try it back down. Easy, easy. Just lacks that little bit of fin oh, finesse, especially when you're turning or using the steering at the same time. I've noticed as well, it sort of locks up at full steering lock, like that. It sort of stops there, something's, so something's catching in the transmission that's at the front. Bit annoying. Doesn't do it all the time though, weirdly. Oh, there you go. that quick test what do we think of WPL's new C64-1 uh, well let's have some pros and cons and not break with tradition the elephant in the room is that low speed control just a little bit jerky with that 260 motor I would have much preferred to have seen the 280 in it I know it probably comes down to a cost thing at the end of the day but that 280 is just so much smoother low down it's it's just like chalk and cheese and I think it was exacerbated uh, at full steering lock which is on a crawler which which is what you're using all the time really and that sort of 
when it locked up it's really irritating to you so um i don't like the motor i don't like the low down control on this thing okay i think i know why this thing is binding up at uh, extreme steering angles it's because i think by the looks of things wpl have changed the uh, ends of the axles to a metal t-piece instead of the usual plastic one but it is in fact binding slightly full steering lock and it can get quite oh yeah it can get quite stiff at times so i think that's why we're sort of stopping dead when it's at full steering lock right well let's have some pros shall we first of which is the price this is not an expensive rc at all i think like i say on banggood i think they're about 45 quid at the moment on a flash deal which is not a lot of money to spend i'm absolutely loving the articulation on this thing it is absolutely ridiculous for a cheapie even though the shocks are well they're not shocks are they uh but the suspension is dead bouncy it really does make a good a good job of adhering itself to all the different undulations so i love the steering articulation on this thing also another good point is the looks i think as ever wpl have done a superb job uh, of making this thing look like a crew cab sort of high looks it looks really really nice i would have liked to have seen or perhaps see in the future a version with with all the lights like indicators and rear lights etc because i know that the board will take it i also like the brake function on this it was really useful although all you had to do to stop it dead in its tracks was turn the steering lock fully uh, and that pretty much did it uh, but i did like the brake function Right in conclusion time, would I recommend the C64-1 to you guys? I'm going to say, on the balance of things, yes, but with a caveat. If you're going to buy one, go and get yourself a 280 motor and gearbox and throw the 260 in the bin. Um, <laughs> the C74 uh, comes with a 2... I think it's a C74. Uh, it comes with the Jimny. It comes with the new 280 motor in it, and it's a belter, honestly. Uh, all the new MNs, they seem to be putting the 280 in them. Uh, I think the new, I'm hoping anyway, the new D99S, that's got the new 280 in it, makes a huge difference. It's such a powerful little package and with, uh, it gives you such a, a nice low down control and crawl. Uh, like I say, if you're going to buy one, get one and throw the 260 away and get, and get yourself a 280. Right, before we go, I've just noticed something else on this truck. Uh, we've got metal hex ends on the wheels so that must mean that this shaft is now all metal on this wpl which is great to see um as ever there will be a link in the description where you can go and get this truck from uh if you found the video of some use and interest please give it a big big thumbs up and if you're feeling that way inclined hit that subscribe button for more similar future content once again guys thanks for watching and i'll catch you again very very soon